board meeting. Uh, if everyone arrives, to our pledge of allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Can you see this? Karen, when you're ready, roll call, please. Chair Howard Young. Here. Vice Chair Peter Overs. Here. Treasurer Jane Schwartz. Here. Secretary uh, Bill Kukowski. President first. Uh -huh. <laughs> Assistant Secretary of Treasury Karen Mars. Here. General Manager J.B. Belknap. Here. Controller Lynn Brew. On the way. District Council Tom Hart. Here. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have a couple of minutes uh, uh, for the September 11th and also September 28th. Has everybody had a chance to take a look at those? And are there any questions in regard to them? Move to approve. I'll second. Any further conversation from the board? Okay, with that said, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, anyone have a problem with them? No? Okay. They're passed. I'll sign them. Tom, I'll get to, or Karen, I'll get them to you. Uh, I think the next person up is is Tom. Can I have one? Okay. Ooh. Um, can we have a? I guess we're going to put something out. But you did some research for us, and, and the board is aware of that. And I think just an affirmation of what you found, if you don't mind. Sure. We'll put that in the record. I think it may be appropriate to go back and get that section and put something in writing potentially. Uh, just my thought, and you can tell me if you, you think no, that's appropriate or not. I think that's appropriate. I brought copies of the statute for everybody. So what happened, what we're talking about is at a couple of the prior meetings, there was a long discussion about whether uh, the recreation district elections could be changed so that every, instead of every owner getting a vote in the supervisor elections, it would be every household would get a vote, similar to what you see with the HOA. And I said I would research it. So over the last couple of weeks, I've done that. And what I found is that the Florida statutes, which create recreation districts, it's Chapter 418 of the Florida statutes, has a specific section that talks about how the Board of Supervisors is to be elected. And in that section, it explicitly points out that every owner in the district must get a vote in the election of the Board of Supervisors. Because it's in the statute, it was also adopted into the charter, which is an ordinance of Lee County, into the charter for the Heron's Glen Rec District. So I had speculated for some time, well, we could maybe go to the county, ask them to amend our charter, but we can't because the the Florida statutes would not allow them to amend our charter to say every house gets a vote for the reason that the statute says every owner must get a vote. So that's that's what it's all about. I, I brought for the board, I brought five copies of that particular statute. Uh, did you bring the 1998 uh, Lee County? Uh, uh, I actually have a copy with me, but I didn't, I didn't bring a copy for each. You mean the charter? It's on the website. It's on the website. But if you want to know, I've got it right there. No, I can't it. So the basically the long and the short of this is that we can't go to the commissioners at, at Lee County and have a change. It has to go back to the legislative branch of Florida to make that change, and that's the only way that would ever uh, ever be uh, any different than what we have today, so to speak. And, and JV's told me that the university part uh, recreation district is interested in the same thing and they had I talked with their attorney they had some interest in trying to get the legislature to change the statute um, but I don't think they're going to make any progress because it's, it's a recreation district there's only a half dozen of them in the state the legislature doesn't usually get behind something like that and it's still a political question I mean, there's there's value there's merit in what the statute itself says. Every owner gets a vote. It is different from the way most everything works in the government, but it is it is there, and it has some merit, and so I don't really believe they'll be successful. Or if we were to try it, I don't think we'd be successful. It would certainly be difficult. We'd have to talk to a lot of legislators who are not in the county. 
Is there a limitation of the number of owners can be on a singular piece of property? There is not. Okay. That was another question. Oh, that although, up. you know, the, the real risk of somebody voting their, their deed with that is if you put your kids on and your kid gets divorced, you better make sure that that spouse is signing off the deed. I mean, you could muck up your deeds really good and, and uh, make the property and almost unsellable as well. So you have to be careful with what you do. Same thing if two families buy real serious complication and, and uh, it takes a pretty good uh, uh, set of uh, couples to get along mm -hmm. that well to buy a home together. Do, do we have the right to ask people who have their houses in trust to bring a copy of the trust so we can verify how many people are voting off of that trust? Yes, we have that right and because, because this board sets the rules for how the election is to be conducted. You, every year, you have adopted a rule that says only the trustees can vote. Right. Unless it's clear, unless they prove to you that um, the owners are just the trustees. So you might have, for example, the trustee might be the wife, but the wife is a trustee and a trust that the beneficiaries, the owners, are husband and wife. Right. So you could make the decision to accept husband and wife in that case. I don't know that you have it. To me, as I read the trust, is you've got to have the, a current ownership interest in that trust, not a not a dollar loan. So like yeah. in my, my trust, for instance, if, if my wife and I pass away, it goes to our kids, right. both on our property here and up north. But our kids are not current trustees. Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about, to, to deal with that. In, in Florida, you've got two kinds of owners in a trust, and, and you know this, but the, there's the trustee, who's the legal owner, and then there's the beneficial owners who are members of the trust, who are participants in the trust. Um, and that's why I say you adopt this rule every, every year that says if it's a trust, it's only going to be the, the trustee's and or the husband and wife who are the beneficiaries. Okay. So it, it, it can get complicated, it's never been complicated. I mean, somebody could come to you with a weird trust. Should you continue your discussions with the other rec district that, that is at least talking about doing this? Would you keep us apprised of that? And if anything comes of that that you know, points in a direction that, that it would be legislative value in that will report to the residents. Absolutely. Okay. I appreciate that, Tom. Any other discussions about that, the voting piece? I'm just wondering if we should send something out uh, to, yeah. the, to the community. Yeah, that we Tom, have explored it. Yeah, Tom sent me an email. Uh, it's, it's probably much to maybe dress that up a little bit more, but uh, if you're uh, willing to do that, Tom, I'm sure it's something that we could put out to the residents. I appreciate it. I thought I brought it, but I didn't bring it. I only brought one copy. Anybody that wants the one copy, you all can do it. The other question, I guess, before we move on from the voting piece of this, and, and it's, it, it's very difficult for a lot of reasons when we take a look at people within the Glen uh, that have passed away, and the county records that do not necessarily reflect their death. Yet, when we do the mailing of those uh, individuals, those go to a household. So, looking from your perspective, how do we verify? We've got a list of people, the HOA's got a list of people, we know some of these people are deceased. Uh, when we go to a ballot count, for example, do we have the right to disregard a vote that comes in that's sent from the county specific to someone that we know is deceased? You, we, the district, have the right to disregard a vote from someone that we know is deceased. That's for sure. what, here's what here's what causes the problem, makes it complicated. That same statute I'm talking about that, that allows for the creation of recreation districts has some specific language that says our voting records are those of the property. Right. So if they haven't been updated, right. What what I've always recommended is if that situation comes up, go to the board um, and and have the, the vote challenged. What I think Lynn would tell you is, and 
when we know there's only one vote, I don't know if this actually ever come up. Whether, whether you've had once where a deceased somebody, person vote. I think that it did come up once. It sounds okay. familiar. It's past voting. And um, it was, um, no, I was notified that the person was deceased. I don't remember exactly what it, the situation it was. the bond count. When we had one oh, was it? somebody signed for a deceased person, we go, wait a minute. And yeah, got back to you. And you up, went, but, that's how it came up. Because I remember that one. So, so, so the answer is that it's come up once and, and we dealt with it. Yeah. Technically, what should happen is we bring it to the board to either accept or reject the vote based on the facts. And, uh, and it, it's not been a big deal. So on this subject, we're going to point out, Florida law is that if you're a valid elector, you're a voter, and you vote, before the election, send in your ballot, and then you die before the election, it gets counted. I'm not, it didn't used to be that way, and I don't personally think it makes sense, but I guess for whatever reason, that's what happens. That's the law. I don't know how to pull it off or pick it up, or I think that's why. Just maybe for practical purposes, you're talking about get 30 days or something in there. Yeah. Well, and I, and I would anticipate from that if you had. Let's say it was 100 votes, and you had three of those in there that are duplicates. Uh, that there shouldn't be a, some of those stuff. If it did not impact the outcome of the election, it would be a moot point to go back and do anything with those. But they need to be segregated and make that decision at the time the election would be taking place. Would that be a true yes. statement? Yes. Okay. Exactly. If we know about it, probably. if we know about it, we don't. Right. Okay. Susan Dorsey. She's. Hang on, uh, Susan, did you have your hand up? No. Oh, okay, right. sorry. Uh, thank you, but no, no, all good right now, thank you. Okay, all right, good enough then. Thank you, Tom, I appreciate it. Uh, anything, any other questions uh, for Tom before we move on? Okay. All right, Lynn, perfect timing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you got general manager oh, general manager report first, uh, sorry. Uh, just following up on the Saturday report, obviously CMM is making good progress on the roof. Um, we are going to, as I, as I stated in my Saturday report, uh, I attached the uh, roofing clerk of the works report. That was fairly thorough. Uh, both he and Dan are, are satisfied with uh, CMM's progress, and we think we're doing all the right things. And obviously, we have inspections from. Uh, County as well, so we think things are headed in the right direction. They're uh, they're on uh, they're on schedule. Uh, obviously, we're uh, we have to do we do have to paint the new fascia board prior to the gutter and downspout uh, installation, and that Dan is and Nate are working on that. Um, just wind coverage, we're keeping Ryan from Gulf Shore Insurance uh, abreast of all the the progress on the roof, and we'll. Uh, Obviously, once we're done, then we can look at alternatives for the wind coverage. I am, I do have a GM meeting on Wednesday. Uh, one of the one of the topics is going to be wind coverage and uh, increases and, and alternatives for that as well. Uh, Ian repairs. We we have had some traction. Obviously, getting repairs on some of the ancillary uh, property that, that we do have. We have about seven areas that are still. Uh, still outstanding right now and uh, we're having we're, we're getting a little bit better as far as uh, getting people to bid on those we're still having problems for example the, the tennis lights as I put in my report um, we're still having problem getting the seven heads that were damaged during during Ian uh, but Kirkwood Electric and Wisconsin Lighting are, are we're all working on that and trying to get those replaced so it is going to be a working process and and obviously, it's going to affect uh, our our losses reserve and uh, what whatever we can recover as far as that goes uh, with with our policy. Uh, restaurant renovation, so the bar is attached. We're still we thought the course people were going to come last Friday. They're going to come uh, on Tuesday here, and they typically need about two to three weeks to to template the uh, the quartz top. Uh, obviously, we're going to the the uh, 
roof, or I'm sorry, the ceiling tile did come in. Uh, they're going to start. And they are working. They are working now on, on that. So, um, again, uh, the bottom line is we're going to be around that Thanksgiving area. We do have the construction will probably be done prior to that, but we've got a lot of cleanup. We have a lot of uh, internal t uh, tasks that we have to perform in order to get that uh, opening clean. But uh, why, Jane's going to talk a little bit on the lobby, and they're working on it this morning. Yeah, okay. Um, because you guys weren't here all summer, I thought I'd do my usual. I usually give a tour of the lobby and everything, just kind of make sure everybody understands what we've done. Unfinished out there is the column baseboard, which you saw Reeves construction in now. That was, that had was, that baseboard was back on it um, because it had to do ground. Um, the chandelier in the center is back ordered. Um, when they went up there, the ceiling was like oatmeal, and there was an oops. So we had to, let's say, the chandelier there met its demise and we're replacing it. Um, at that point, just so everybody understands, there's no more furniture to be bought. We're leaving everything as it is for the season, and this is the plan that was approved by the board, and that space over there will give you the opportunity for a Christmas tree, for social events, and stuff like that. We're not getting more. No. Okay. What's left to do is um, the unneeded stuff that's now in the pods, we have to get donated, and Karen and Dan and I, Beth, everybody will be working on that. Or my term for everything, sidewalk soon. Okay. The artwork, the accessories, and the scones, uh, sconces, yeah, I'm hungry, huh? Um, in the lobby are all from Copperly. The side chairs were repurposed. They were in this building, so we repurposed them. The desk chairs were from Copperly. Okay. Then if you go, we... Um, you go to the clubhouse rooms A, B, and C. The director table here is from Copperly. The credenza in A is from Copperly. The sofa table was repositioned from Heron's Glen. The mirror that you see there was repositioned from Heron's Glen. We did not buy it. The bookcases you see in A, that solid wall, were repositioned from Heron's Glen. The baseboards that we put in A were actually from the baseboards taken out of the lobby and reused to save money. Um, the chairs that you see in here are more of the copper leaf stuff that we had more than we would need. What that enabled us to do is put the rolling chairs that were, caster chairs that were in here in A and B um, and because of the work that was done, we got two additional tables in A. Um, and those extra table bases were from Heron's Glen. We have those. What, well, what did you purchase? The library trolley, the magazine rack, the 36 inch tables because they were in such bad shape, and the tabletops that you see, and only the tabletops in the other rooms. We purchased that. Minimal, they were on deferred and capitalist, we used it. The ballroom lobby, the chairs were from Copperly. The sh chandelier was from our restaurant. The sconces were from Copperly. The artwork was from Copperly. The little side tables are new. The accessories and the round mirror in there are all from Copperly. Um, the Caster chairs that were A and B have now been have now gone to activities A and B because they have caster chairs. And the question has been asked, well, we're afraid to use them because we may get paint. We're not worried about it. We're trying to see if anybody likes them because if they do, we're living with everything for a season. And then if we would need them to be reupholstered, we can't find caster chairs of those sizes. So, no more this, we're done. We're going to live with everything for the season. The pool deck, JB said the lights are, are not done. 
Okay. The real thing about the pool deck, that dark brown furniture that you see over there, is all from Copperleaf. It was taken, it's here, um, by the restaurant furniture, but you got to clean us out. When they closed down their tent in uh, what March, April? March. Yeah. Um, they have more outdoor furniture, and JB is working with David. We get first cut at that. So, no, we're not going to buy any more. You know, people don't like it. I mean, I've heard people say, well, those low, dark brown loungers, why'd you do that? We didn't buy them. They were part of the 12 that were given to us. You know, we live for a season. If they're really hated that much, I'll put them on a yard sale. Um, so all of the tropitone tables, the chairs, the high cap tables and the stools, the sectional and the love seat, live with it for a season to see is this what we want because Karen has priced out getting those cushions reupholstered and it's not cheap. That's top end furniture and those are big. Um, what was that Karen? Uh, depending on how you wanted to do it. If you just wanted to recover what we had there, it was 2000 If you wanted to put uh, 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 the, with a better fabric, it was 4000 And if you wanted to replace it with the, the rain resistant, which is what is out there now, with the sun umbrella over top of it, it was 6000 For that, for that set of roundish couch? Yeah, that second <laughs> that. <laughs> And that's top and furniture. I mean, that's anybody that wants to look at the furniture, look online for Tropitone outdoor furniture and see how much you pay to buy a single table. I mean, we got the deal of the century. <coughs> but that's where we are. And I think it's important that everybody know that, I mean, everybody busted rear to get this stuff done and use as much as we could from every place else in this property. Thank you. You're welcome. Two things. One, is this list, in your opinion, going to be enhanced even further once we get the, uh, the restaurant completed, or is that the list you think that is really encompassing pretty much everything that we're going to get? All the restaurant is, is all the artwork from the restaurant is is from Copperleaf for repurpose. Okay. Um, You've answered my question. What I would like to do is hold off on sending that out. I, when we get done with the project, and mm -hmm. we've got all the artwork hung, and all the rest of the stuff is done, and if under the uh, circus tent down there, if we get all that stuff that JV as a gift to us, if we take it out of there, we'll make that inclusive of this. And then we'll put that list out at the end of the day, and as we're moving on to the other projects. But the, the entirety of what you've done, because I think it, it is very important, for the residents to know that we've taken good care, good stewards of the money that we've had, and this was a tremendous uh, opportunity for us that we took advantage of. Okay. So, so if you just keep that active, and then when we're done, we'll, we'll finish that up, if that's acceptable to you. Sure. Do you have any indication uh, from Copper Leaf that uh, they just want us to take that stuff out of there, or are they uh, looking for money for our board? Or? Yeah, and that was the, that was the question. We, the, the, the original deal was it was it's all of it. 50, it, it's, it's all of it. And so uh, the way I'll approach David is, David, you just let me know when we need to get uh, a truck over there to, yeah. to grab that furniture. Yeah. Okay. Is that in pretty good shape? Very good shape. Yeah. Wow. You know, when you look at the, the easy one, is you see the four squares out there, the dark brown? Yeah. There's six of them. And you know, when we went back with the truck the second time, they put two of them in the tent. So it's that kind of thing. There's all over the place, and, and there's there were more outdoor high tops, and I don't know if they're going to keep them. I mean, they have them at their tennis court and their and their bocce courts, um, all kinds of stuff like that. And we know that the interior, the their restaurant, there was one high top bar table and chairs that were missing from one count to another. But I don't know if they're under the tent or not. Yeah, well, I would guess with our generosity of saying that we'll have to get those out of there for you so you don't have to worry about that, that David, please uh, just let us know. But I think it's the right approach. Are we going to make the decision on the, the blue uh, covering? After season. Because there's some people, and I have been approached, that said, Jane, people don't like that. Okay? You don't like it? I'll throw it in the trash. Let's use it for a season. 
they make a determination what are residents. This is for the residents. What do the residents want? And then we've got to make sure we've got money. Same way with replacing slings. Um, and yes, Trapatone sells replacement slings. It's got to be on our replacement cycle because that's such solid furniture that you can reuse it with just slings and that. But I think we need to see that our residents like it or they hate it. I think it's fodder for our upcoming survey. Thank you. And let's let the let's let the people talk to us. If they think that they want those things out there, we'll find find the money to do it. If not, we can always remove them. Okay. Anything else, Jane? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Just to tag on the pool deck, uh, the lighting permit info has been sent to the private provider. We're going to, we're going to utilize them to uh, to help us shepherd the permit along for that. The, the fixtures will be here, according to Jeff, talked to him on Saturday, on Friday. So um, we're still waiting for the polls, and as I told Jeff, that we're trying to, once we open up the restaurant, we want to have the ability for outside dining as well on the pool deck. So it's, it's in our critical path. Uh, before I jump to golf membership. The impact windows, uh, Dan is, is working with the BNT impact window and door company to replace uh, nine windows and, and one door. Those, those are the most vulnerable, uh, including the HOA windows as well. So uh, we'll, we'll get the information for a resolution for, to Tom on, on that uh, for, for the, uh, the meeting next, later on in the month. Um, real quick, uh, Lake Bank erosion. Uh, I did contact Johnson Engineering, Dana Hume, who Tom suggested, who has a lot of expertise in, in uh, Lake Bank erosion. He's on vacation. He's back this week, so he's going to give me a call, and we'll talk about uh, some type of arrangement that we, we have. I think one of the things is the objective, I think, is to establish the metrics on how we gauge what the priority list is. We have a, I've got a lot of emails from people who live uh, in the back of a in the back in front of the lake, and they're requesting that we do work to their their lake bank. And so I think it's really important to get uh, uh, a some metrics that we use that we can communicate to the to the homeowners. So uh, as as Tom pointed out, the the plat and the and the easement. And so hopefully uh, we can we we can come up with something that I can uh, bring to you from from Johnson Engineering. Just turning to golf membership real quick. Uh, as I said, my report, uh, Bruce, we 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 have we are 36 members uh, below what we projected. Uh, that basically equates out to 185000 dollars. So Bruce is actively working the waiting list. He's talking to. He's got a few people he's talking to today already. He's got uh, from from when we we uh, told him to open the gates, three singles and and uh, four singles and households. So uh, we think we can work that list a little bit better and uh, try to close the gap as far as what we budgeted and what our actuals are right now. Any feedback on, on why, why we're below? Well, a lot. We, the, the, resident, the resident singles were down 33%. A lot of it's health. I mean, you're always going to get that attrition. Uh, a lot of it's health. Uh, Non-resident um, we were we were down um, the, that that was the thirty three percent yeah so um, there's a lot of I think some was help some was being accepted into the into the, the, the golfing groups um, I think there's to a certain extent some kind of a little caste system here whether it's resident non resident I think that if we want to keep the residents dues low then I think we have to welcome these non residents uh, and. And allow them to uh, to participate just like just like any other member would at any other club. So um, recording in progress. Can I talk now? <laughs> don't you think some of it is also to the fact that houses are just now going on the market after all the repairs that had to be done from the hurricane? I mean. I kept watching all season and seeing 11 or 12 houses for sale, and now there's between 40 and 50. And if you look at your numbers from through September, we had what we have 50 houses that we moved last year versus a, about 100 from the year before. So there's houses on the market now 
that perhaps these new people that buy these, depending on the economy and the interest rates, may come in too, where, where there was really not that movement before. There's still so many places here with tarps and everything else on the roofs. I think that's a good point. And let's say that 50, uh, we've, we've decided, or we, we sh showed last year that 20% of our residents are golfing members. So if we get 20% of the 50, that, that's 10, so we could, we could close that gap as well. So hopefully the people that are moving in uh, are golfers, and, and we, we, we start to shrink that gap a little bit from home sales as well. Um, Before we move on yes. from that, I, I, we, we have a gap. So the, I don't know if everybody's seen the minutes or not, but about two hundred thirty thousand dollars at this juncture with the additional people, right? One eighty five. One eighty five. Okay. So the, the, I my mind would say that at the end of December, if we don't have that gap resolved by memberships, we need to have a plan from yourself and uh, and Bruce that how we're going to get that one eighty five because it's real money to us, yeah. and we need to decide that with the high season coming before us. If we set tee times aside with golf now or whatever your thought process is. You're probably in the same mindset, I hope. But. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we said it at the at the staff meeting, there's only a couple ways to close the gap, whether you raise right. revenue or cut expenses. And, and there are there are some things that we need to look at from, from Tim's vantage point as far as uh, where, where are some cost savings. I mean, these, these are the, we got to align the, the expenditures to the revenue. Right. And so we're, we're going we're gonna to look at that uh, because we, we have budgeted for a pretty robust uh, outside play season um, with with the, with the revenue coming in, so I'm not sure uh, how much more we can squeeze that that one. But uh, so I think there's at, at the end of the the calendar year, we're going to have to look at it and uh, make some decisions. Yeah. If you take a look at the surplus that we'll have, and, and as Lynn's going to share with us today, we very well could take lose all our surplus if we keep on the same trend as we were for last year. This next year. Just by this loss, so it's a, it's a very important number for us to to have a, a good plan for. So, yeah. thanks, JJ. Anything else? Um, and I just kind of following up. I Lynn did a nice job of getting the financials out. I think we, we can. What I like to do is just quick overview, and yeah. then Lynn can can go through. Um, you know, a couple things that we've on the as you got these today. The and the non golf operations. Obviously, we, we budget to break even, so. Uh, we might have a small, uh, small uh, surplus in the non-golf net income. Uh, as you can see in, in golf, we've it looks like we're right at two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. So when you when you combine the two, let's just say uh, right around the two hundred fifty thousand dollars surplus. However, uh, the net expenditures from Hurricane Ian was three hundred seventy thousand dollars. So I think it was fortuitous that we did have a surplus this year to. To help cover uh, the expenditures from from Ian. And, and remember, when we approved the budget, we we had the premise that there was going to be a golf surplus, and that surplus would be applied to the losses reserved to build that puppy up. Um, so that's right. don't don't count on freebies, folks. Yeah. It's already. In effect, allocated to the reserve accounts. I was gonna say this is what I think we need to make sure that the residents understand. The surplus is in operations, <laughs> and we still have the other things that we need to cover. Uh, fortunately, we have a surplus in operations, but that isn't the whole thing. Because we didn't get the wind coverage, what did we save? We had a certain amount in the budget for insurance. Four thirty-seven. And what is our actual premium? Was right on? over three. So it's so we got 130,000 there. Yeah. Well, that's presupposing we're not going to make new coverage. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's so only I, a three three month gap. Yeah, but, yeah, but I'm wondering about the timing of the, the wind coverage. You know, right? It looks like we're through this season. But, you know, fingers crossed. Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering if, if we push it into June or July next year, and try to, and then try to do the whole package so that we're out of that out of that hurricane window. Uh, if, that doesn't make some sense. Bill, when the, remember when the broker, the last meeting we had the broker, we had this discussion, and the reality is if you're going to buy wind coverage, we need it to cease it at September 30th and get all of the premiums aligned, and then the following year start pushing to move that 
coverage period. But this was a long discussion at the last no. board meeting to talk about how to do that because our broker understands very well that we want this in, I don't want it in June, I want, I want this puppy in April, March, April, May, the latest, so that we don't even have a threat of a named storm anywhere. JB, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I, I think that um, Wednesdays, Jim, I mean, I'm talking to other clubs, what, what do you guys do? Just, just getting alternatives, and, um, but, but that's one thing, obviously, Ryan knows that uh, uh, he needs to give the board alternatives and, uh, and prices and things like that. But. but, and I think Peter says it very well, remember, if when you buy coverage, 80% is, go ahead, say hi, I'll right. mess it up. You're, you're tied into 80% of the premium. On the first three months? No. Oh, no, what, what it is. Oh yeah, thank you. Uh, That's what come, I, I figured out something, come, come August, yeah. We will have paid. We 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 caught up on all, everything. We could we could cancel the insurance August and we reissue in August one year, and then the next following year take that eighty percent again and go back to like June. I think it is. It, it'll take a process, but you can do it. Yeah. The trouble with August is for. I understand that, off. but <laughs> that's the only that's the only way you're going to get there because yeah, you're, you're, you're you're obligated to eighty percent of the premium. No. But the, broker broker understands understands that's that's a, yeah. but the broker understands that's the goal. That's correct. Yeah. Just, just one more thing. When we look at the balance sheet, uh, and this was obviously part of the surveys, but we've, we've been looking at the current assets and current liabilities, and that's kind of the, the working capital portion. We've raised that 20% year over year. It's about three, two, six, 625000 uh, above what, what we were end of fiscal year last year. Some places they start talking about the storage building. Um, probably get the restaurant done first, but it doesn't think we should put that off in that I, I have a thought on that. Um, after we get this restaurant out of the way, uh, I'm going to work with the Brodden Selling Task Force and take a look at our existing facility mm -hmm. and okay. see what kind of storage space is available there. Because in my experience, you go through things, things have been there for 30 years. Mm -hmm not been used and it's just taking up space. I did this in my prior life and it worked out very, very well. And I think we can reduce the size of the building. Yeah, we've had that discussion and there's, there's lots of stuff out there that yeah. needs to be reconciled as well as, you know, we have a huge building that's just there for councils. So do we really need all that or can we get a, exactly. a lot of questions? Uh, I, I know that we will want it as quickly as possible, but I think we have to do our due diligence before we go ahead and spend million dollars on the five dollars. Oh, yeah. um, but at some point we should. Absolutely. But I, I, I just want to get the restaurant out of the way for a while. So if I understand correctly, and I'm not sure how, how you're going to go through the rest of this, we have about $250,000 that <coughs> at the end of the year uh, from the budget is a surplus that we're going to put towards the um, Perking account, is that correct? The losses reserve. The losses reserve, and we have about $220,000 left as far as golf course improvement fund should we have need for Lake Bank. The Lake Bank that, that's, that's where we've been allocated, I thought, already. Not all of that. Not of this. Here? What? The, 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 the special improvement fund for golf? Yeah. That $220,000, how much has been earmarked already? Uh, the only thing that's been earmarked, as far as I know, is, is going to be the bulkhead. Right. And is that coming out of the golf improvement fund? Yes. yes. And so that's a hundred grand. Yes. So we get we still have money left in the golf course improvement fund. That, that's what I want to make clear. And we're not taking all the monies that we have and okay. putting it on the hurricane fund. No, we're taking new monies. New Old money's money. still there. Exactly. That was. Thank you. I want to be sure because because you confused me. We're going to have enough. I'll be able to follow it. Oh. And I think it should be pointed out that the majority of the expenses was because of the golf course, right? Yeah. 
Uh, and so therefore, I think it's only right that the surplus should go to the expenses from the golf course. The other short expenses. Damn the short expenses. Yeah. And the, the, the last, just so everyone that wasn't in the meeting of the, of the golf course committee, uh, we talked about the plan that we had from Ricky Nix. Uh, we all agreed to that that's the direction we're going to go. They're going to go back and reevaluate that to what we've got currently in the, in the ground, so to speak, and what we have planned to put in the ground. And then we're going to reconcile that of what's left and have the, uh, a discussion about how we're going to approach that and what we're going to do and when we're going to do it. So just so you're aware from the board perspective. Do we have a plan for which lane comes first? That's what the lady was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he's going to try and get it. Yeah, I mean, we have, we have, we have one from Atwell Engineering, and it just didn't, Tim went around with the Atwell Engineering gentleman and you know, talked about littorals, but I, again, there weren't metrics attached to that report, and I just need more than what we've we've gotten so far. The uh, another question I had is on page two of what you provided us in, in the, the work in progress. The one thing that's missing on that is the retention pond. Uh, I don't know that we spent any money in that. I know we put a bladder in out there at the maintenance area. I don't know if that's deferred money or it came out of this fund. It's actually not a working process any longer. It's, it's actually a part of the property improvements now. Okay, so the, the additional funds that we had, we had $400,000 or $500,000 put in there for that. Where does that money show up in here? Balance. Your balance. Yeah, the balance. In the balance. Eight, it's not listed look, in working look progress. At, look at your bond funds where we have the acquisition and construction fund. It's yep. 3.9. That's in that's, there. That's anything that hasn't been paid. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I just want to be sure if it's coming for because it's, we have the bridge down here, for example, that we spent $2,400 on, obviously, but it's listed as zero. That, that's because that ended up not becoming a capital project for the bonds. So that was actually expensed. What the work that we did to um, determine whether or not the bridge needed to be redone. But the uh, retention pond would have been a capital project as yes. well. Yes, yeah, the retention pond was. So, so it it's in the assets. Yes. Okay. That came out of the bottom of the way, the, the wire. The yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a question on page seven the hurricane expenses. Mm -hmm. um, you have total. Hurricane expenses, fiscal year 22, 23, or 528, 147. And then down below, you have total hurricane expenses, fiscal year 22, 23, 575. Yeah, Why two, you got to add the two years. One's an actual year to date, and one's prior to it. So it's two years total. So add 22, 23 together. Okay. So oh, okay. that's five and a quarter and 50. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I answered that. Okay, thank you. I want to go back to page six, if I may, specific to the restaurant and the assessment. Uh, if I look at the numbers that are there, the assessment for the budget year, it looks like we ended up 491, 676. Is that correct? Yeah. That, and, that's, that's, that's almost like a plug number. The budget yeah, is it actual because you're going to allocate. You get the money, you approve the budget, it's allocated every month or every quarter. And it better be the same, or we got a different problem. Okay, what I want to get to, <laughs> it was three hundred seventy-eight dollars per year per household for that, and it turns out to be twenty-six or thirty-one dollars a month is all it cost us as individuals here to have a full-service restaurant present on the property. Would that be a correct assumption? With that seventy thousand got added in there. Yeah. So thirty-three dollars a month per household to maintain a restaurant for a subsidy. That may be something we want to talk about in the near future future, but I just wanted to be sure I was on the right page with that number. It's a pretty pretty good bargain. I, that's my opinion. But okay. Anything else on the financials you want to bring up? Any questions from the board? 
And before we move on, because this is a very sensitive issue, obviously, I'm going to open it up to the room, first of all. Any questions of anyone that's here with us in the room in regards to financials? Uh, seeing none, anyone on Zoom today have a question about the financial information that's been provided by uh, JB and, and Lynn? No, thank you. Okay. All right. With that said, let's continue down the, the process here then. The looking at the committees. And first one uh, is the audit committee. Jane? No meeting. No meeting. Okay. Uh, facilities and amenities committee. Elaine Sawyer? Elaine here? No? No, I, I will go ahead and take that. that we did, the committee did meet, and uh, I told them that the board in uh, theory of concept uh, agreed with their wish list, but they wanted, the, the board wanted them to create a process for doing that wish list, and so their response that they sent back uh, to me, uh, to bring to you, was in order to get this, their process started, they would like for, uh, they would like to have an email address that they can, can use, uh, for example, uh, HGRD wish list at hgrdnfm.com or whatever. So the committee is requesting an email address specific to, for their use. I, I sat in there in that meeting and, and that to me is, is basically the charter of the wish list is basically the charter for the facilities and many committee. They bring items to that. It was recorded, it's put in the minutes, and it's brought forward if it makes sense to have a board review and, and take action on it. Now we're saying we want to go outside of that, that meeting content and create a, a um, site, however you want to put a website, whatever you want to do, to have people put into that, then you're going to have to take that from a facilities and amenities, then take that, make the evaluation, and then go forward. It sounds like a step that I'm, Th I'm this, this was put forward by Elaine, and she's not been at the last couple meetings, and I kind of hate to speak for her, but I think her idea was that uh, oftentimes people want to donate towards something. I have $500 here that I would like to uh, donate to the rec district. What could the rec district use? And uh, maybe it needs a new set of bocce balls. <laughs> and I know that's I know that's in deferred maintenance and that, but there you go. It's, it's just a, an example. They could come to the committee and say, "What do you have on that wish list that someone has said they wanted uh, that is in the $500 range?" And this, this, I'll see if there's anything there that I would like to do. Um, I believe that is their concept. And if, if the board is not in favor of that, I will go back and tell them that. But I believe that was my understanding of it. And I think Kim is on, on Zoom. She's, she is on that committee. Maybe she has some thoughts, too. I, I don't really have any thoughts. Um, but yes, that was their request. I was on that meeting, so yeah. So the question that then I would ask as a result, of, if we're going to create this, who is going to do monitor that to be sure that it doesn't get obsolete and leave things on there that are going to come back full circle and say, we told you about this, whereas in the minutes of the meeting, those things are captured and it's, it's before you each and every meeting. So and that's, that's what, that's that's what the board had told them before, was that they needed to come up with a process for doing this. And at this point yet, they really have not developed a process. So if, if the board would like, I will go back and, and tell them that, that uh, we would like to hold <coughs> off on creating any kind of an email address until they uh, develop a process for handling the, these requests. Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. I just don't want to put a website out or, or site out there without some direction on how it's going to be maintained and what, what the outcomes of the, that would be. So, okay. just, Karen? Susan Darcy. Darcy, do you have your hand up? Yes, I was at the meeting, and I believe that, again, and, uh, you know, just to, to my take on it was that they felt that the email address was the first step in creating the process. Okay. And, although, you know, so again, so that because we, we talked about this and ensuring that, that however that information is collected is that it is monitored, it is reported out, 
it's, you know, also acknowledged so that somebody doesn't send something in and then, you know, it's, it doesn't get on the list. But again, my understanding from the, the discussion was that the email, the request for the email is the first step so that it could be communicated out how people send their requests in for the wish list items. Okay, thank you for that. I, and I think Sharon's captured it. Let, let's go back to the, the group again. Get some definition of how you're going to handle that, what the expectations are, once somebody submits something in there, what's the timetable for it, et cetera, et cetera. Once we get that, then then we can make a, a thoughtful decision on how to do this. What would you do, have a, like a running list of things? Projects like five people. Yeah, well, that, that that is what we were asking them to right. tell us what it is they want to do. They really were not very, and like I say, they <coughs> presented that several meetings ago, and she has missed the last couple of meetings, and so I, I, I really do feel that we need a clearer idea of what it is they want to do before we do anything. And, and please make sure that when they do their evaluation, it becomes cost effective because we know the auditors said we have too many Excel spreadsheets here <laughs> and too many in effect off off sheet um, sub accounts and and new sets of books. Let's make sure we're doing this in a cost effective way because we just don't have the staffing. Yeah, but if somebody said you know <laughs> I want to donate five hundred dollars to buy new bocce balls. That doesn't, even go, that doesn't even go through our books. Okay. Donations do. Donations. Oh, yes, they do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it becomes district property. Yep. Well, that's true. <clears throat> so the conflict I see in this is what we have in the charter and what the responsibilities are, the facilities amenities, and adding another something out there. To, it, the conflict, just it, we, we can't have that. So we need to get definition. Not that it won't be a great idea. Everybody's in tune with using electronics, so it may be a, a, a godsend for all of us. I don't know, but it needs to have a framework, my opinion. I, I agree. Okay. Um, anything else, Karen? No, that was it. Okay, uh, Bruce Johnson. Oh, I'm sorry. Hello. Dennis Pop. Finance. Dennis, are you on? Of course. Dennis, are you here? <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Here. Um, the Finance Committee met several times, but they all related to the insurance. And they, you know, the last one was with the, the board meeting where we met with the broker, and I think that's been fully discussed. So that's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. You did a good job. Uh, <laughs> Golf committee, Bruce Johnson. Good to see you here. Yeah. <clears throat> we had a meeting. Um, uh, a couple, two or three. Bruce, times. you need to come up closer, oh. please. Okay. So get it on the recording. Sure. So everybody can see your face. All right. Uh, with all the residents returning uh, snowbirds, et cetera, we've had a lot of comments about the condition of the golf course. Uh, people are very happy, and I just thought I'd pass that on. So the money that we're spending is, appears to be doing good. Uh, we had one resignation from the committee. Uh, for personal reasons, Janice has to resign. Um, Peter asked me to review, get the list uh, of old volunteers from, from last year and uh, I checked with everybody to see if they still wanted to uh, join the, the golf committee and I just passed that on to him and he will take it from there. <clears throat> One big issue from the golf committee was uh, John Trimble presented an uh, email uh, requesting that, that Heron's Glenn form an uh, inter-club uh, team to play in the Florida State Inter-Club tournament. Uh, we had a long discussion about it. Um, it's a match play event for men and women to play on Thursday afternoons twice a month. One each for the men and one for the women and, and it would take up four tee times uh, that would have to be uh, set aside. Um, and there are eight members on each team so uh, it amounts to uh, somewhat of a significant uh, effect on the, the, uh, the uh, residents' uh, availability of, of uh, tea times. Uh, the, opp the opportunity to join would cost uh, approximately 4000 in lost revenue due to the low price that these people would pay. And all you can charge them is $30 for the cart 
uh, each team would have to be uh, pay $150 to get in. Um, we have to find our own grouping to play in. Florida State does not take your name and, and form uh, groups to play in. Um, so there are little things that are, are negative to it. Um, after discussion, uh, the committee voted to support the, the participation in FSGA Interclub, and uh, I am recording that. And uh, it was a three to two vote, or four to three vote to uh, to join it. Um, any questions regarding it? Will you be using morning or afternoon? Afternoon. On high season, they, 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 they run from this January through April. I'm willing to discuss this, but I'm not willing to vote on it today. I need more time to, to think about it and turn it over in my head the pros and cons and that on it. The math of that works out this way if you, if you, the way I've been looking at it in high season, using only the three months of that, it's about a four thousand dollars hit that even with the Income that comes from $150 of sign up, $30 from the carts, it's a $4,000 hit that the rest of the golf membership has to take on to support 24 people. That's the basic, that's the bottom line number here, which is uh, in, in season when we can get $110. We're setting us up. lots of tea times to our, for our residents. Exactly, exactly. That's, the, that's where I see the the, the rub will be in this, just setting tea times aside. Plus, we have to subsidize um, the effort. And correct me if I'm wrong there, Bruce. That was a, that's where we're basically at. Right. Yeah. It, it, it's a way of promoting the club into some events. But most of, I looked at the list. Most of the clubs who are participants uh, in this region are all private clubs. Um, and it's a different situation for us. The problem is we're, we may need to open up more key times to the public to make the budget. Right, exactly right. Yeah. And now you're going to try to take, a, take 24 away to get to these people yeah. Yeah. In, in high season per month, which is pretty significant revenue. Your thoughts, JB? Yeah, the pros and cons, and I've, uh, other clubs been involved with the Floor State Golf Association and, and this, this inner club. I mean, the, the, the Pros are the fact that you get to showcase your club, and even if it, they're private clubs, oh my gosh, you know, Heron's Glen, um, that's, that's a great place, or word of mouth, and so I think that's, you, you've, got a, you've got a delta about $70, $70 per tee time, which, which you could potentially the, lose the, the, the $4,000 in revenue. Um, but the, the, the PR and the, and the, the exposure is, is really what I think uh, Clubs are looking at, but again, that's a. It's tough to it's tough to metric that and say you know hey this is what you get if you showcase your club. I mean we might get zero out of it. But yeah, do we really want to be PR and the people that belong to private clubs, clubs anyway? Exactly. Yeah, I mean um, that doesn't mean they'll stay there at those private clubs if, if they see us. Doesn't kind of depend on what division you're in because if they're all from Naples. And they, you get in that group. Guess what? <laughs> Chances of yeah, that's the, really the, the, the positive and, and the ability for some of our members to play competitively uh, against other other clubs. But those were we those were just some of the some of the, the pros on it. And there's there's a lot of cons, but there are some pros. Well, one of the other factors that uh, kind of they get is negative is that in order to form a team. We have to open it up. How do you select them, uh, and how, who's going to play? So that might take other tee times for people to play and see who's going to who's going to be competitive that week or the next week. Um, it's a nice idea, and, but I think uh, the effect on the residents could be very, very negative. Even your committee seemed to be split on. We were very much so. Very much so. so I think given the fiscal constraints we're facing right now, and uh, I, I can't see improvement. I really can't. Let's see what happens over the next month as far as membership. Yeah. 
and uh, just defer it for a month. I mean, if we fill up our membership. I don't think you can defer it for a month. Is, is, no. is there no. a deadline on this thing? Well, they have to start application now. They have to form a group to play in, which is, right. they have to find that. Uh, I don't know if there's any openings currently or not. <coughs> I don't think we can play it. No. Anyway, any other questions for me? It's up to you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, I think given the fact we're going to have to open up those two things, I think budget. Right. Thank you. Um, any further discussion on this? Do we want to have a, a vote? Or Does anyone want to make a motion? Any, anyone in favor of, on the board to move forward with this and have them pursue this? I guess that's the question. Either yes or no. No? 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 I'll make a motion to uh, deny the uh, recommendation. I'll make a second then. Um, all in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. Bruce? You may carry the message back that the board did, did not accept the uh, opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, oh, can I ask one more thing? Sure. Uh, as, as Bruce mentioned, we had a resignation at Janice Earthdale, resigned for personal reasons, uh, conflict in her schedule. After consulting with the chairman uh, of the committee, I intend to make the following recommendations for membership. Uh, we will elevate Ron White, who is presently an alternate member, to permanent membership and name a new alternate, Len Price. That's my recommendation. Is that I know, a motion? That motion is. I will second that. Yeah. I know Ron very well. I think it would be a good choice to be on the committee. Good. Any further discussion on the board? All in favor of accepting the motion to make the changes? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. So do. Good. Thank you. All right. Is that price? Price. 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 Yeah. Price. Okay. Long range planning. Fred? Come forth, young man. I'm coming. <laughs> First of all, for, for those in the room who, who don't know him, Jeff Buxton is a member of our Long Range Planning Committee. He's also a member of the Finance Committee. And for all practical purposes, he's the architect behind all of the street strategic planning work that we've accomplished so far. Um, he's handling some of the work. There are two areas that uh, he asked for additional help on. and. Uh, so we, we basically divided, uh, took a couple of people who could start work over the summer on two projects. One is the development and implementation of the community uh, growth plan. Uh, Dennis Pop and Carlton Smith volunteered to do that. Basically what their, their first step is going to be to obtain a site plan, a parent plan, and to uh, review and then meet with the county land use representatives to determine possible developable, developable open space in the community. That is, by its nature, going to be, it's not going to be a one-off. That's going to be a long-term plan. Um, but we just, we just can't accomplish these kinds of things over the long run at a once a month or a once every other month meeting. Um, the second half is a hurricane preparedness plan that uh, Bob Herbstritt and uh, Bruce Johnson volunteered to start working on over the summer. And, it, and again, um, they're, they're now working on a, a starting a draft, let's put it this way, of uh, a plan that will include written hurricane response um, checklists, defining roles, responsibilities, etc. So at this point it was off on its first meeting and it'll be a continuing process. Um, that's about it. Beth, would you have anything else to say on what we've done? No, it's just our first meeting of the season, so just getting, getting back into things. So we're then gonna come up with more land. <laughs> 
We'll, we'll talk to the cows across the I think the they room. ought to talk to Tom. I can find you a little bit. <laughs> Where? In, 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 in Woodstock Way? Yeah. Well, we got some land getting back of the New Mystic property. Yeah. That's yeah. really what I'm thinking. Well, well I was going to. a little bit more, I know. Oh, I'm a boy stuff. See that uncle and piece that you now. swapped out for something before? Yeah. Well, I'm sure that Dennis and uh, Carlton will be around to talk to various people. The object is to try to not bog down in a meeting where you you meet once a month or, or once every other month and you get so far, and then by the time you get back to the next meeting, you forgot where you're at. So um, that's about it. The other uh, thing that I think is significant in this as well is we uh, ask Jeff to start the process of uh, looking at getting our survey out no later than the first of uh, December. And he's, and he's done that. We, we're, I think our, we're in the mindset that most of it's going to be take from the last one and just put it out as a comparison A to B. But there's specifics in there that we need to get some input to, specific that are on food and restaurant and those types of things. So. Jeff has started that, and um, we'll probably have something in the next month or so to review so we can get their survey out. So. I see Jeff is up. Oh, Jeff, do you have any comments? Up there. Jeff? Yeah, sorry guys, I had a conflict this morning, so I couldn't show up, and that's why I'm joining on the Zoom call instead of coming down. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really busy this week, Howard, but I'm going to try to get to pulling that survey back up over the weekend maybe. I'll pull out all the specific stuff that was around the pool deck because that was a special topic. And then um, there's only one other question I'm thinking of revamping a little bit, and that was the one where we asked, you know, what new amenities you'd be interested in. And I'm thinking of using, the, like, the top uh, five from last year that aren't already being done to try to get some, some you know, which, which one of these five would you prefer or none of them at all or something else so that we can get some more specific tailored responses on some of the, you know, the dog part and the basketball and the, you know, those kinds of things. So yeah, that's, that's the only other adjustment I'm thinking of right now. That's all. Yeah. The pool that came up today, I think before you actually joined us and that the, the soft cushion seating that we have out there, uh, came up as a question that we may want to take a look at to putting in the survey. Uh, do we like that? Not like that? Are we willing to spend money on that? Uh, if so, do we have a range? Uh, something along that line to define that because uh, it's a very expensive proposition to resurface what we have six, seven thousand dollars. And if no one has an interest in setting in it, uh, we can find a better place for it alongside the road. But we need to ask the relevants for that, and that's probably the appropriate place to do that. Uh, you're talking about some cushioning on top of the papers? Is that what no, you're talking no, about? No, no, no. The, the sectional. Furniture. Oh, on the seats. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Just that sectional. Now, one of the problems I've got, though, with the, the restaurant survey going out, without our restaurant being open, is the residents are going to have no experience and new experience, if you will. So it, it, it could be accurate. But the food types. We've had a lot of discussion yeah. about food types comparing this to a lot of places so and Jeff talked about this just a little bit there's a way we can modify that to try to categorize that and I, I don't want to speak for you Jeff but I think your the thought process is take a look at the categories and then try to get some feedback uh, are we comfortable with the way we're at do we need to go to hot dogs and hamburgers and, and shut down the rest of it you know those those type of things that are, it doesn't have anything to do with where you're going to sit in there that so much as what you want for food well, except if you go to hot dogs and hamburgers, you start eliminating your banquets. I understand. Well, those are saying, right. They're talking about changing the business model. Right. And that's really what we have to address, well, what, what the residents want. Let's, first of all, let's step, take a step back. Let's let Jeff do his thing. He's very capable of this, very familiar with that. And then when he comes up with some ideas, then we'll hash this out and try to refine it further. And I think that's where we left it, correct, if I'm not mistaken. You okay with that, Jeff? Yeah, okay. but uh, but these are helpful about topics, burning topics that y'all want a little more uh, focus on, so that's yeah. helpful. We have another scheduled meeting at the end of the month. Uh, that's going to be a couple weeks. I don't know if that's enough time to get a, a rough idea, but that would be great. 
and they'd give us uh, then another month to create uh, the examples and get it approved so we could get it mailed out um, hopefully before Thanksgiving or at least by the 1st of December is the goal. And then we would need to get the feedback out uh, back pretty quickly so we can make some adjustments if necessary. Okay? Yep, that should work. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Thank JP, you, Fred. JP, I have one question. You talked about the uh, um, hurricane preparation plan. Has Bose Electric gotten close to our golf maintenance? Yeah, they're still Permitting waiting for the permitting. Uh, we've got to get, get back with... Is it uh, the electrical or is it the propane piece? So the, in the ground piece tank? I think it's in the ground piece tank, but I'll, I'll get back with Dan Parker on that. Yeah. Is that anything an expediter could help us with? No, we talked about that. Um, if, if we're getting through hurricane season and it's over, then how much money do we want to spend? But, the, right. you know, those, they advertise all over the place that they're going to be right there with you and put you... I'll get with Dan and get a little book. Okay. The electric's all in, booked up to the generators, by understanding. The only thing we don't have is propane, and the question that we had to talk about a bit is could we put a temporary propane tank there should we have the event that we need okay. to run that. And that was so the that is our contingency plan. We'll contingency plan we'll at this point. We'll have you run down the street to right, get propane. Right, we'll get 20 pounds. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Just checking. Thank you. Okay. Uh, problem solving task force. It's kind of do you want to talk about that a little bit, uh, Peter, or not? Uh, well, actually, we got our person here. Uh, Are you the problem solver? I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a lot on your plate right now as far as problem solving, no, right? No, she's too busy working. Who's the present chair? I think I was nominated for oh, that. Okay. Not nominated, it was like, you know, short straw. Right. <laughs> I think you had something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, at this point, um, at this point, the only person who is really active, and she's very active, <laughs> is Beth. Um, Seven days a week. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Um, there's nothing else in the cards other than this little, what you just uh, mentioned at the meeting earlier. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we'd be anxious to get into that when you're ready. Okay? I just, I, as I say, I just want to clear our plates as far as the rest is concerned, and we'll dive into that. Okay. All right. And if there's any other things that, uh, let's put it this way, come to mind, for you or anyone else, if you just want to discuss with uh, Beth and I or, or any of the other members, just let us know. Thank you. See if there's any yeah. practice. <clears throat> I think that'll become transparent once we get the restaurant done and we take a look at our other four million dollars that we got left in the pie mm -hmm. of how we're going to do that. Then we'll probably reach out to you. But, yeah. okay. okay, thank you. Resident Event Committee, Gary. Okay. Yes, you may. Um, our next event is Halloween. Unfortunately, ticket sales aren't as brisk as they have been in the past. Um, one of the feedback we're getting, although we get very positive feedback on the on the, the restaurant and the food, a lot of people don't seem to want to. We're, we're forcing them to buy a ticket with a with every buffet, and I'm getting some feedback that people aren't excited about that. I'm not really sure if that's the case here, or just Halloween isn't as big a deal as it used to be, to be honest. I mean, I wouldn't go if I didn't have to. Um, uh, there is one question, though, JB, I don't know if you can answer this, is right now the stage, or at least last time I looked, the stage had furniture on it. Are we going to be able to move that to the band to get up on the stage? Let me check. Okay. Let me check where we're at. Yeah. Yeah. I I uh, moved the bar stools. Moved the majority of the bar stools are along that run that's behind the wall that runs from the, each side of the stage. Yeah, yeah. stage. Yeah. The week of the twenty third, those are supposed to be picked up by our, our refinishing company. So those will be taken off site. So I'm hoping that when those are with the refinishing company, we can put some stuff in that run. Is it just bar stools and the table bases? Clear out some of that space. Yeah. Okay. The table bases? Because I don't want that leather furniture that's going in the 
lobby of the restaurant. I mean, we got some real I think sensitive. We need, need some time to look into the situation. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, our group is the this week. Our farmers market is going to be up to almost the full vendors. And we've been getting very good feedback, particularly when the the vegetable truck comes in. Uh, people have just really been enjoying it, and the vendors have been very happy. Uh, we were one of the few communities that kept it going through the summer, even though it was kind of slim pickings that time. But the vendors are very positive and consider Heron's Glen as one of their, their better uh, clubs or areas that uh, to go to. Some of them do better here than they do at the Clinton Border uh, Farmers Market on the weekend. So, um, we did decide to add a summer event for July on July 6th. It's a band coming that's going to be down here from, from the, I think the Virginia area. They play at uh, Fisherman's Village. And we thought we always get complaints that there's nothing going on during the summer for the year-round visit residents. So hopefully they'll support this. And it's supposed to be an excellent band that we're getting in here. So we're excited about that. Um, we're planning another food truck festival, one or two this season. We'll be doing that probably by the end of this month. Um, and we've got a couple ice cream trucks scheduled for October, no, excuse me, November. And we'll start scheduling it for the rest of the year also. And those have always been well attended by the, by the uh, uh, residents on a Sunday afternoon. They really seem to like it. And that's it. I've got an additional question, and it's in regards to membership. Uh, my understanding is that uh, you've reached out and added people to the, the residents. Community. Right. When when all was said and done, we had 14 people. On um, um, whose authority did you add those? Um, well, we actually were under the impression that we could add. We have. sent. We sent. Okay. I'm not sure who sent it out, but they sent out a request to the community for people who wanted to join the residents event. Yes, and we had that. Well, there is a list, the existing list, which, which, still, I, which I received. And there were people on that that did not get added to it, that you added, or someone added, I'm, I don't, I'm pointing to use their, their chairperson or whatever, yeah. added people that were not on that list. And therefore, we have people on it that. Oh, are, that's not true. Okay. Um, that's not true. Everyone we added were off the list. Were off the list. There were a few we reached out to. Get a yay or nay, that's the only way we can control the total number 
of people that are on, on the committees as a whole. Some of them we have very strict rules to. This committee, we are pretty loose on that based on the thing yeah. that that could be the so we so I heard about the original four how many did you we ended up with yeah. five. Right. Right. One more or five more. But, but so not from the, the list that the board had said would be approved. Uh, the the board <laughs> said would be the next ones appointed. Um, can I say something? Up here? Up here? Oh. Again, well, we had that list of eight. We appointed four, and we said if they needed more, we would take the next four. That's not. So See, I was in privy. Well, unfortunately. Okay, but still, the fact remains that the committee can't appoint its own members. But I, I got something. If we get down to new business, I hope to take care of that. Okay. okay. So stay tuned for more. We'll well, question, sure about I have to leave. Okay. I Can we leave. address this right? Yeah. 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 This is important. Okay. Um, let's see. One of the responses when we asked for them to come out was uh, that they sent back the list and it didn't match. But as as a result of some of the responses we got, I would like to nominate the following to the resident events committee: Pam Bedore, Kimberly Hamilton, Connie Presley. Shelley Christensen, Susan Darcy, Patty Spraduti, and Nancy and Dave Thompson. That takes care of the people that the board told would be on the committee and the people that the committee said would be on the committee. So that, that's my motion that we nominate those people to the committee. I'll start. Okay. Before we take a vote on this, how many people then, if we add this number, what, what is the total 22. number? How many? 22. Pretty big number. Yeah. Uh, I know that at the end of the conclusion of the time uh, for the committee, it can be discharged, and, and we can discharge this before we start in April again as we select people. So, I I personally don't have a problem with putting those people on there. I think it's an overwhelming number at this point, but I think we owe them that opportunity because they didn't get selected initially. So well, we we promised four and. They promised five. I think that's Well, I think, can you, most of those people w were selected. No, the only one that we, we both had on the list was Pam. Pam, Patty, the Thompson. Why are you shaking your head, Pam? I don't think um, those were not on, on the, the they were not on the, the list that they were oh. the eight. They were right, they're not part of the, I, I, remember. Remember. I don't remember. Oh, so you're the saying eight. you're adding them now. Right, the, the, the ones that basically the board had promised could, would be were next in line were Pam Bedore, Kimberly Hamilton, Connie Presley, and Shelley Christensen. That was who the board had told would be the next ones appointed. Be, because of, of the misunderstanding, uh, four other people were appointed in addition Susan, Patty, Nancy, and Dave. So what? To kind of rectify this, what I'm suggesting yeah. is that we put them all on. Okay. And that's why we have a motion to do in a second. In a second. Uh, go ahead. I think there was a breakdown of communication between uh, the past president, the past chairman, and you. You did, probably didn't get the. No, there was no communication. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, I so, well. so you're completely blameless for yeah. this, and uh, I, I want that pointed out. So I, absolutely. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, that's absolutely, absolutely right. right. Yeah. And when you review the, uh, uh, the content for the committee, it doesn't s specify how the people will put on the committees. The charters for the rules for committees say the board will come up for all committee members. It's not actually in their charter, it's in the overall uh, all committee charter. Okay. And, and, and the standing committees generally have. A, a maximum yes. number right. and appointing of alternates where I think the ad hocs, the, I know that the audit committee has a maximum number intentionally, but I don't think the others have maximum numbers. Do they, Karen? No. It, well, in, in, in my discussions with the president of the committee, they have a myriad of jobs, as you know, <laughs> right. and uh, they plug people in here and there, what have you. So I, I don't think it's a, a unreasonable number to have that many committees. Certainly, if the chairman feels that he needs these people, I'd like to see them. Okay. So
So if you're okay, we're going to go ahead and vote. We're okay, going to add sure. these people at this juncture, sure. and then we'll keep this uh, process okay. ongoing. And Absolutely. We'll get, okay. But, but then, if, and let's go one step further. If somebody would resign, and you need to notify the board, right. and whether you want to replace them or not, it becomes Do not show a slot until you bring somebody forward. No, we okay. won't. Okay. That's basically okay. All right. Yep. Yeah. Work for you. Sounds good. All right. For all in favor of the motion that's on the table? Aye. Say aye. aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. Those people will be added. Do you want to send a note to Gary on those names, or do you want to take it out of the minutes? Somewhere on the list, I think, somewhere. So, okay. at least the list that I received. Well, there's a very large list because there's still people waiting to get on that committee, yeah. so that list won't be. I'll ask Karen to send those names so specifically with the motion yeah. that's yeah. been accepted. Help I recognize. We have a question, I'm uh, sorry, before right. we should ask this question before. No, that's okay. Just as a comment, to the best of my knowledge, media is, is another example. I don't have a specified number of people that are on media. I'm usually out there clamoring like a, like a nut trying to get people to volunteer. So that would dovetail. Yeah, the, 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 like I said, the ad hocs, the only one with a specified number, I think, is the audit committee. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, that's the end of the communications for committee reports. Uh, old business, approval of the rules and regs, Karen? Okay, yeah, those, the... Let's have one in your books. The October 6th. Uh, revision was posted uh, last week so that people have an opportunity to look at it. Uh, we had put out, I think they needed to be in by something like September 10th or something, October 10th, if they had questions or concerns. We got quite a list of those in. I took the, the questions and concerns that came in to me. I went around to some committee chairs to, to some the management, general general manager, the uh, food and beverage manager, the assistant general manager. Uh, uh, we talked uh, to the uh, uh, pro shop and, and got answers to the questions. Some of them resulted in changes in what we were doing or the way it was stated in the rules. Some of them, they just simply got an explanation of why that rule was and that it was going to stay. So what you have now in, in front of you, the October 6th version, is the version that was put together uh, uh, in answer to questions from the residents and in uh, conjunction with uh, the management to uh, try to answer those, those questions. And uh, so on that uh, note, I would... Uh, Move that the board adopt the rules and regulations as presented in the October 6th draft. I'll second that. Any further discussion? I think we've drawn the conclusion that this is a, is a very uh, volatile thing and we will continually make improvements, but we need to put a stake in the ground, and October 6th would be a good stake at this point, in my opinion. Uh, anyone, someone online, Dar uh, Susan, Darcy? Yes, hi. Um, so I, I, I appreciate the tremendous amount of effort that went into this um, revision, and I thank everybody who worked on it. Um, I still, I am, I want to say that I think that the, the fact that the, um, the board can change the rules at any time, and there's not a clearer uh, explanation of, of or anticipation of how that change will be communicated before the rule is actually um, changed. I think that that's, that's still something that very, you know, gravely concerns me. And I'll, I'll tell you why. I think that in combination with the fact that the email was sent out and said that the, the attachment, you know, the rules were meant to be flexible. Well, rules are not meant to be flexible. That coupled with the fact that we recently changed um, some policies around the fact that JB is basically um, solely uh, in charge of determining when somebody is suspended, if they can appeal or not and use the facilities. I also believe the fact that that coupled with the fact that the board is, is in 
control of who is appointed to committees, I think it just creates an environment where we're, we're losing the checks and balances that we typically see in a, you know, in an institution or in an entity that um, is, is designed to represent the people. Um, and you're elected and you do have the sole control, but you are still meant to, you know, represent the people and the, the desires of the people. And you have a responsibility to do that in a manner, you know, what that um, does their best interest. And I think, again, everybody really tries hard. But the fact that, that you can change something um, on your sole discretion and, and not notify people prior to it, I, I think that that's a miss. So... I don't think there's been a change made of any type in any of the policies and procedures that hasn't been discussed in a board meeting and okay. in the minutes. And, and it's an opportunity of any resident here to challenge any of those, and they're always brought before the board for discussion. So yeah, I, I don't. are you advocating that any time a, a policy or rule or regulation is changed that we should go to 1,300 doorsteps and ask for no. approval? No, that's not what I'm advocating. What I'm saying to you is, is that there needs to be clear indication in those rules as to how you will communicate and the timeline in which you will communicate it because it doesn't it doesn't tell it doesn't specify that you have you i'm not saying that you haven't done that in the past and i anticipate that you will so i'm not i, I think it just creates the environment because that those rules potentially will outlive this board as well unless you know what i'm saying and that particular verbiage is changed so it just it like i said it, it creates the potential for there to be a, you know, a, a uneven application of those, those rules. It, it just creates the opportunity is what I'm saying. What if, what if we, just speaking out loud, what if we uh, uh, let's draft something that says that if we're going to change the rule, yeah, we put, that, part, put the fresh teacher in. That we, uh, yeah. that we would give uh, notice, to uh, notice, unless it's an emergency. You know, I think that we would carve that out, but that we would give uh, 15 or 30 days notice to the community um, that we're going to change a, a rule. Um, I, I have a little bit of a problem with that. There, there are rules. Uh, management is here to manage the community and needs to be some flexibility in being able, able to do that. Um, I don't think we need something in the rules. The rules are for residents. We do have something in the policies already that, that guide management and how they communicate. And we've already discussed the way things get communicated to the residents through workshops and board meetings. Uh, there's, a, there's a formal uh, bulletin board near the, the restaurant. I'm going the wrong direction. Uh, we have district emails and newsletters that come out. And I think and, and um, we have a website. And I think there's a different level. If for some reason they need to, they decide to change the rule <coughs> on uh, where you go to get your cart numbers put on your golf cart, I, I think if, if procedurally it works better someplace else, it needs to be brought here, discussed, put out. JB's very good at communicating and sending out newsletters and information in that. The residents are informed through our official channels. Um, and that's uh, no, know, that's I, the way they I, find out. I don't see the I just see the problem of putting in a procedure whereby we spell out thirty days in advance of what we'll send notice to the uh, to the community in thirty days they have to comment and what have you and then we go. In. Yeah, let's let's yeah. say let's say we change the rule on dogs. You, just, you can bring dogs into the building <laughs> and, and uh, uh, but before we do that we give the community thirty days notice that we are at least going to take that up. And uh, uh, I, don't see, I, I don't see a problem putting in procedure. No, again, except for emergencies. I just hate to tie management's hands. With the, no, no, oh, hey, no, you're no, not going to tie it because no, no, no. they will operate, JB will operate of what's written in here. Right. Yeah. If there's a proposed change, he ignores that until we vote on it to make the change after the acknowledgement. If we're going to make it 30 days, that's fine, that's a policy. But JB will continue to operate what's yeah. written. Just, just one other comment to Julie. Julie, the uh, one there first. Susan. Oh, I'm sorry. Whoever Susan. was talking. Susan. Susan. Whoever was talking. The uh, uh, it, it's not up to JB whether uh, somebody who's been disciplined has the right to appeal. It's an automatic. They have a right to appeal. Um, 
what I said was that they have a right to use the facilities while they're appealing. That was a recent change. Okay. No. No. It was just clarified. I, always thought, I thought that was a change. My bad. If it's if it's just clarified, then I'm wrong. But again, so I, I think that, that I, I appreciate the proposal to put some time frame in for a notice. Again, unless there's there's something that's an emergency, I agree with you. If it is an emergency and if there's something that, that needs to be corrected that is causing potential, you know, or that there's a situation where people could be harmed, absolutely. But I think in general... There just needs to be a reasonable time frame. Reasonable. Not asking even 30 days, I think, is, is maybe too much, you know what, but a reasonable time frame where people are notified of the change. Well, I, think I appreciate it. got a question in regards to this? Uh, we, got, we got a motion. A second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Anyone in the room? I add to this anyone on Zoom? <coughs> okay. All in favor of making a motion to set a timetable for acknowledgement of changes? To no, 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 no. 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 We're, we're, the we're motion just... is to approve the oh, rules and our, regulations. I thought we approved these. I'm sorry. <laughs> We've got a motion to approve the rules and regs as they are. Right. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Now we need one for the policy change. No. Let me, no. Draft, let me draft the language. Right. Okay. I'll bring it to the next meeting. Okay. All right. Susan, are you okay with that? Yes, thank you very much. Okay. All right. So these will change from draft to the new version of that? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll send a so green copy to Karen with the draft and that we moved on it. Can I go? Yeah, you're going to have to do this. It's going to be the same thing about the draft. Policies, then that's different. Than that. You're going to go into the policies. The policy, I'll look over the policies and see where I think it's where should go. <laughs> Probably under the communication. I don't know. I'll call it. Okay. okay. Anything else on our old business? Um, I'm wondering, we put off at the last meeting discussion of, of that electricity at the pickleball courts. Is that still not ready to be discussed? I think we've already made that correction and it's done. It's done. Okay. I thought it was. I saw it's a little resolved. thing sitting out there beside it. Could you tell us what, what's done? <laughs> well, JB can say we, we basically tumbled underneath the, the asphalt to reduce the price and getting it uh, yeah. uh, put in there without tearing up the asphalt and it's been installed and I think they're... Yeah, it's been installed. We still haven't received the invoice yet, so Dan and I will get together today to see if we can't get it. Okay, and Pickleball is going to pick up a portion of that? It's, it's on the table that they will. They're they are willing to give us fifteen hundred dollars. That was the original discussion. Uh, it will probably exceed that number as far as cost is concerned. That's, that's what I was wondering. As long as that was still on the table for yeah, them. Once we get the invoice, we can have a discussion about it. But they they are willing to support that. So. Okay. Anything else? All right. Uh, new business. Wendy. 
No, Wendy. That was uh, just JB. Concert series sele entertainment selection, Wendy. Uh, she had made a recommendation. Right. Five. I move that we appoint the 2023 24 concert series selection committee. No. No. I'm sorry. Great selection of the 25. Five season. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, the, appoint the following people to that committee Mary Tony, Patricia Perry, uh, Linda Gastrick, Dennis Galuka. And Terry Fox. Are all those the ones that have volunteered? They went out? They have, they have volunteered. Yes. They went out. They have volunteered. Um, they have okay, so we're not going to get into what we got into with the residence committee. This no, they're, no, they're being recommended. Okay. okay, I'll second that. I just want to add something. The people, in, there were some really fantastic candidates that did not get selected, but I have never seen such a package. Uh, put together are such diverse and, and experienced in picking um, professional performers and stuff of the people that apply. It was just kind of like, oh my gosh, we really need seven. We need them all. <laughs> it's too big to control. I understand it. So I'm hoping that they will again apply next year. And just, it was just a, yes, it was so much an eye opening. Involved. List. You had a, an individual that you were talking about, uh, Jane. That, that, is that person on this list? No, it's okay. This is this is who they you know been selected or been proposed, and that's fine. You know, it's like I said. You look at the two that didn't get selected. Even it's like, oh my gosh. Okay, can we make that person an alderman? Um, it won't work because they had to commit that they would be there, and so you can't pick them up in between stream. Um, they go off site for these site visits. Um, well, but it, it, if you add that flexibility of somebody is ill or uh, cannot make that data, you can commit now, but you, you can't, I, I, to me, there's always flexibility in this, especially in our age group, <laughs> that things happen. Uh, I don't know, it's just, we have alternates for all our committees. <coughs> we don't want to do it in here. For this? Okay. We, we generally don't have alternates for ad hocs. Okay. Uh, no, but I appreciate the offer. Okay. Just, okay. Like you said, I was in awe. Okay, we got a first, we got a second, we had a discussion. Uh, any further, further discussion? Okay. Uh, all in favor of accepting those names for the committee, say aye. Aye. Uh, uh, anyone opposed? Okay. If you have the list, okay, if you please publish it, we'd appreciate it. And thank you, Wendy. Uh, resident comments. No, I have more oh, oh, okay, sorry. More new business. <laughs> okay, we we the board's been making an effort to bring the ad hoc committees into uh, line with our policies, and we did send out an informal note to a member of each of the ad hocs, uh, asking them, as as Gary has said, about you know the committee members and that, and if there were changes requested, and and as a result of that note that went out asking about those, uh, I have a couple things here. Um, First, I would like to officially remove Diana Tolman and Danielle LaCavalier from the Library Ad Hoc Committee and ask that the Board Administrative Assistant send them a thank you for their service. And then I move to nominate Elaine Quillam, who is an application, has an application in, as a member of that committee. I'll second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. No. Okay, we did rest of the events. I got another one. Um, the problem solving committee, which I think you are, they they sent uh, they, they returned something on that, and they don't want to add things. But I just need the liaison to know uh, that uh, John Edinger asked to remain on the committee, but not in a leadership role, and you may have taken care of that. That would need to be taken care of there because problem solving elects their own leader. Um, I would also like to ask the administrative assistant to send John Cowgill a thank you for serving. <coughs> and I would also like to ask that Janice Esdale receive a thank you. Serving note. Okay. I think that's, uh, uh, I 
that's standard when somebody it leaves. Matter. Matter. Yeah. It shouldn't be a matter of course. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right. That's John told us. I don't think he has you. I didn't think so either. I'm going to let him get away. <laughs> I don't know. I've threatened to do things that it's also going to be fine. But they... Okay, and I have, have one more, and that is that Pretty in, in Pink has, is starting to organize and put their committees together uh, on that. And we do have a policy that says no soliciting on direct district property without board approval. So what I have here is I move that the Pretty in Pink Committee be allowed to sell cookbooks in the main lobby on a schedule worked out between the committee and Wendy. I'll second it. Okay. <coughs> Are you going to limit that to just the lobby? Yes, because they had originally, yeah. a little bit of history on that. A few years back, one of the organizations was selling raffle tickets. You could not go anywhere to the restaurant, to the ballroom, to the driving range, anywhere, without being approached for someone selling raffle tickets. And we said at that time we would keep all sales to the lobby. And I talked with these ladies because they had originally said ballroom lobby. And I said, I'll take that to the board for approval if you're willing to go to the main lobby. And they said, no problem. OK. Uh, I've had recent conversation within the last 24 hours that that that's expanded beyond that to go to bingo and other things. So yeah, I, I just want to be sure that, that I don't have any problems yeah. having it where everyone else has to go, but it has to be conveyed that they don't have free, free reign of anywhere yeah. in the community. Our residents, some of them really complained about not being able to go yeah. anywhere yeah. without someone approaching That's them. That, that was my point, is just that we're going to limit it to, to entryway there for yeah. everything else. Our, our policies actually say ticket sales but I think that we can kind of extrapolate that into any sales. Mm -hmm. But since this okay. is a, it's a solicitation actually. Right. Yeah. So I think that we can 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 do that. And if anyone, if they come with anything else, solicitations, you know, we can decide on them one by one. But this one is limited to the uh, main lobby. Okay. How do you do that on uh, cases where uh, you have member guests? The uh, pretty peak typically are, are down there in the. In the area where I'm practice screen, trying to sell tickets to raffles and those types of things. So, are we saying that now we're going to prohibit that from occurring? <coughs> we've looked the other, uh, I, we've had some things in there that where we're, we excused 501c3 charities for some things, but I think I don't think there's anything wrong with them getting letting the board know and saying, Can we do this? And that's basically what we're saying, we're asking them to do, I think. We're not saying we're going to prohibit them from doing it. I'm done with it. Uh, right. For example, I'll say member guests and, to, and solicit, right. but they need to come and ask our permission before that they before can put and stipulate when that, when that yeah. can happen. Right? Okay. I, I mean, I'm asking the yeah. question because we're going to run into that we are. in another we are. two months. What's, yeah. what's going to be our criteria? Good question. It's very difficult. If they're a charity, they have to have the credentials of being a charity. That's the only thing I can see. And then well, how do you make that selection between one charity and another charity? Well, you really can't. But the, by having to come each time, the board then has control over how many of these things and how often and where. And where. Yeah. yeah. Okay. JB, there's something we have. Pretty, pretty in Pink yeah. is on the list. Hey, hang on a second. Uh, I, I, Susan, I'll get to you. I promise. I saw your hand up. Okay, it's, just, I, it's not. It's not a comment. I just want to let you know. Pretty in Pink is listed on the events committee um, res, uh, as selling um, their cookbooks at the farmers market. So just want to let you know that it's not just. So they are. It was anticipated they would sell at the farmers market. Okay. And I don't think they can do that because they. That is a resident. That is a direct district sponsored event, and and our. Not allow solicit, you know, at, at okay. president sponsored events. Good point, uh, Susan. Thank you for that comment. JB, you had a comment? Yeah, I just think we need to we'll push that out in a blast email so, yeah. just so that everybody knows. Yeah, just in there, unless you get permission from the yeah. board prior to that. Well, during during the farmer's market, would they be able to sell it out of the lobby? Yes. Okay. Uh, 
got, are they going to be allowed to put a sign out there saying they've been in the lobby with this pretty and pink? Uh, that solicitation, right? Yeah. So how does that differ from having a seat out there? Well, see, we ran into that with Harry, the Harry Chapin stuff that they were putting out there, which really wasn't allowed. And we said they put they moved that to the loggia of, of the home. Um, there's nothing to prevent one of the members from walking around out there and saying, you know, we have these for sale in the lobby. I guess it could come out as a comment you know, from JB sent out that days of the food, if, if in fact they're going to support this and have people there, it, it could be a comment that, you know, we're going to have the food trucks in here or whatever, and also pretty people be, I mean, if we are in agreement to do that. Well, the, the, the motion reads on the schedule worked out between the committee and Wendy because <clears throat> there may or may not, you know, that, that space gets used sometimes. Yeah. Karen, you have a comment? Um, Bruce behind you, Tracy, I think. Yes. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Uh, as president, <clears throat> president of the Veterans of the Glen, um, we sell our tickets. They advertise on the Google site primarily. Uh, is this pertain to events like this or things like this? Google, uh, Google has nothing to, to do with that. We, we do work with the resident with the, the uh, recreation district. Uh, if you were to sell tickets at at a location here, I think the policies say at the table in the in the main oh. lobby. But but that doesn't prevent you from wandering around selling them. And I think on the day of the event, you're allowed in the ballroom lobby. Okay, I just wanted to make sure with, yeah. you know, we have two events. And yeah. I want to make sure how that, yeah. if it applied to us. You know. Good question, Bruce. Okay. <clears throat> we're back. We got a first and second <laughs> motion. I don't know where we're at. Stipulating yeah. that it that can only be sold unless permission is granted from the board. Otherwise, Sell tickets only in the entry area. Yeah, uh, let, me let me repeat it. Uh, Pretty and Pink Committee be allowed to sell cookbooks in the main lobby on a schedule worked out between the committee and Monday. Okay. I'll second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Okay. Anything else, Karen? <laughs> Getting in the weeds. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And now one more, just a comment. It's not a new business, but it's just an, an, an information. Uh, we have been working out, and this is why Karen has this set up here, uh, uh, taping the meetings. We've worked it out with the HOA that they're allowing us to use uh, 902, and we've been broadcasting the meetings on there. I would like to suggest that everyone look at those, see what you think, and we address this at another time if we want to continue doing that, if you think it's worthwhile, what kind of hours you want to run. Right now, we've just kind of been, been doing it, um, but it hasn't truly been authorized. But unless you object, <laughs> we'll, we'll go, we'll, we're, we're, we're trying it out. We have not publicized it to the residents because we're working out kinks. I guess the question I can ask of, of Tom, um, if we make a publish this and we put our minutes together and we uh, approve those minutes, can we then destroy the tape of the meeting itself uh, without any difficulty? Because every one of these now will be out there forever if we can't, if we don't have that right to do that. I probably want to look at the answer before I give you a solid answer. What, what I think the result will be is if you don't use this video that tape that you're making to run your business. If that's the case, you more than likely can destroy it <coughs> whenever you want to. So the record turns out to be the minutes that are approved by the board. Right. Anything else in, in, in uh, for example, Karen? If, if, if Karen <coughs> used this recording to create the minutes, then you do use it in the conduct of your business and you would not be able to destroy it. We're doing a separate one. So, She's got her Zoom recording. That's what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> so the, and, and, we, and now I want you to research this, but it, once we're done, once Karen uses the Zoom, and she uses that to create our minutes, so once the minutes are approved, she can take that Zoom message 
and discard it. No. no. You say so, the reverse of what you just said. Yeah, it, so, so whatever Karen uses to create the minutes, those are permanent records of the association, semi-permanent. You have to keep them. But is this so when, this is that's not so that's no, this that's is not just what Karen that's a the channel. This is just an extra that you're doing for fun, but it's <laughs> not part of your business. I don't think you're gonna to need to keep it. I do want to double check what I'm telling you. But the Zoom recordings if she uses it for the minutes does have to be maintained for what period? It's something like three years. I, I've forgotten exactly what it is, but it's it's a few years. Maybe it's one year. So I've been, I've been using the Zoom recordings in place of the audio recorder. <coughs> yeah. That discussion has come up on, not, on what we are required to hold on to and what we're not to. So that was recently asking the question. Okay. Uh, residents comments? Let's start on, let's start in the room. You've been very patient and listen to all this. We'll start around the room. No hands, no hands, no hands. No hands. no hands. Okay, go to Zoom. Anyone on Zoom have a question for us this, today? Comments today? No hands are okay, up? Okay, thank you. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Julie? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Okay. Um, I do have a couple things. Uh, the pickleball courts, there's, rumor has it, I don't know, there's like was an over order of all the uh, paver stones, and they're sitting out there on pallets. What is the situation on that? Are they going to be, are we going to get, they're waiting to be picked up and returned and get our money back, or what is the situation of pallets of stones? Some, some of those papers are going to go where the white shell is. That, that's and the that plan. was in the original in the plan that there were papers. Yeah. yeah. So that they are they are scheduled to be put down at, at the pickleball courts. Okay. And where will the rest of them go then? I mean, there's a massive amount out there. Yeah. There's. Uh, we we want to make sure that we have uh, obviously uh, enough adequate. Uh, for the for the sports complex and also the uh, pickleball, I think any extra will probably store down at the uh, some somewhere down at the golf course maintenance building, just in case we, we need extras. But I don't I don't foresee it being uh, a, a real excessive. But, but that was original. That was all part of the original order when you were estimating quantities because you always have to have a few extra. And the color of those pavers is the same color that's used at the pool deck, at the sports, and that all three of them are the same color intentionally so that they can be used to replace if you need be. Okay. Um, uh, another deal, uh, thing I have. Um, when talking about soliciting, are our employees, let's just say the, the food and beverage employees, allowed to solicit raffle tickets for a son's football team uh, while on duty? Yeah, I'll have to look into that, but no, we, we don't we don't condone that. You, you don't condone it or you do condone it? No, I do not. They're, they're allowed to solicit then to uh, residents is what you're saying? No, no, we, no, it's not allowed. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it's been it's been uh, observed uh, and and admitted by uh, a food and beverage employee, and um, it kind of got very convoluted. Um, not last Sunday, but the Sunday before, there was four of us up there, and um, we couldn't get served uh, as as usual, and. Um, we ended up having to just leave and we basically don't feel like going in there if we're if we're going to be singled out i mean there was uh, a food and beverage employee talking to a whole bunch of people and uh, her response to me i go why why can't we never get served here you know we've been we're sitting here with an empty pitcher and it was four of us 
And um, she said she was not in charge of the bar area. And um, but I mean, she was standing behind the bar. So I don't get I just don't get the whole thing on that. But that's that's a whole nother picture. Um, what about I mean, we're building a one point five million dollar bar. I think we better start addressing the um, speed of our employees, the the way they treat other residents, certain residents. They just ignore you. Um, this has happened so many times with us. You, you stand there and stand there and stand there. Even when we try to get a, a bucket for the pool deck, uh, my significant other stood there 15 minutes and finally, I guess it was Janine, I wasn't with him, but it was Janine, the food and beverage manager that finally had to serve him. But anyway, so that's a whole other thing. But I think when we get to this $1.5 billion or million dollar restaurant, we need to start addressing our staff and making sure they're they're doing their job uh, and not just uh, because they maybe don't like a particular person, they're just ignoring them at the bar. And then one other thing, the pods out on the parking lot, what are those out there for? I'm just kind of curious. Yeah, we're, we're storing some of our, our equipment uh, from the kitchen, I'm sorry, from the from the restaurant, we're storing some of the, the older bar uh, tables in order to get those uh, out of there. So they're just your quick storage. We won't need them very much longer, but uh, we need to put we need an area to put some of our old furniture and our old uh, uh, equipment there until we got the uh, restaurant back online. Okay, gotcha. Uh, JB, also the multi-use path. Who is in in charge? That was uh, done pro approximately end of June. I, I can't for sure say the exact time. But who is in charge of getting all that scattered rock um, still and getting all cleaned up? Yeah, that's a good question. We, we're working with the Go agent. Enough. Sorry? I think it's gone on long enough. If somebody were to be riding their bike down there, and fall off to the right side, I guess, if, uh, coming from the back, um, they they will inevitably have a root in their eye, a reflector in their eye, some a rock, a boulder. I mean, it's just a mess uh, until you get almost to maybe Mystic Way. So all the way back to Caden, that whole area is just a mess. I just wonder... What is the plan for all that? Is that the HOA or is that the recreational district? Yeah, or are we just watch over the existing debris like they did behind the pool? I, I'm just asking. Yeah. No, we need to make sure that Mainscape has finished up the all the, the, the cliffs repair there. And then uh, Dan is going to work with Jeremiah trying to get that, that area cleaned up. We need to make it look better than it, than it does right now. So... Yeah, that's definitely on the list. Yeah. I'm sorry, but I really think it's long overdue. Um, certainly, uh, those poor guys that have to do the grass work, and I guess that's with HOA, you know, have to avoid all this. It is just a mess. And flags still hanging. Maybe somebody could address the flags that are still needed and get rid of the flags and the cones and... You know, it's just a mess. It's very disappointing that it's taking this long to get, you know, after a project. I don't know how they can um, do a checklist and check stuff off when it's kept in this disarray. Okay. Ju Julie, I'm going to interrupt you. JB said he's going to take a look at that. We'll get it resolved. We totally agree it's unacceptable, so we'll get that uh, accomplished. Do you have anything else you'd like to add today? No, that was all. Okay. We but you. but, but I would like the uh, soliciting of the resident of, of the employees addressed with whoever needs to address it because it uh, it is it was observed of money exchanging at the bar cash in in one bartender's hand from a resident and then she fully admitted that that's what it was for and we are a cash society and I think we need to really put the, the clamp on that because it's very, very concerning. Julie, uh, JB took notes and he, he 
he, he indicated to you, you might not have heard because you're on Zoom, but he is going to address that uh, with the food and beverage. So that doesn't occur. So. Okay, appreciate that. Okay, thank you. And anyone else on Zoom have any questions? Okay. Uh, we have our next meeting. Uh, no, let me uh, yeah, the question was, we want to keep that date, the 30th. 30th. Okay, I'm just asking the question. Leave the 30th in, in this, uh, our next meeting. Okay. JB, we have anything coming up? Anything we have to ratify? Well, I think we're going to take a look. Mm -hmm. If nothing else, we need to discuss what we want to do on the survey, which is just okay. kind of committed to give us some of that. So, yes. Okay. Uh, not, if there's nothing else to be before the board, I'll entertain an adjournment. So moved. Right. Um, thank you very much for your time, everyone that attended, and on Zoom. Have a good day. Thank you. Zoom's off. <laughs>